on behalf of the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for blessing us and saving us and loving us, Lord. Lord thank you for giving us this opportunity to praise and offer to praise our lips to you. And now, Lord, we ask that you to open the eyes and ears and hearts of our understanding that we will receive more of this today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, we have an interesting thing happening today. <clears throat> I had a really tremendous message that the Lord doesn't want me to deliver. So, he gave me another message. He does that a lot. And, uh, All right. and now this one up here, I now think is better than the first one, of course. Well, let me just uh, start off here. Okay. Title of message is a beautiful thing. We're going to look at a beautiful thing today. We're going to look at a truly beautiful thing today. Okay? A city literally made of precious people. A city made up of people. A city made up of people. I mean, so we'll see how that comes out. And it starts here by reading in the italicized part here, a little preface to this whole thing, where it says, uh, in, uh, 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord uh, will come as a thief in the night, that means very suddenly, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, <sighs> under his calamitous noise. And the elements shall melt with, melt with fever and heat. And the elements shall melt with millions of degrees of heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up with fire. Now those three things, the great noise, the fervent heat, and the burned up, are all elements of nuclear war. Right? That's coming. Now, we're going to talk about after that occurs, then a beautiful city is made by Father God. A beautiful city made up of people. Okay. Let's look at the, uh, uh, and let me just read now what we're doing here. We're going to read the book of Revelations. <clears throat> I'm going to read what, what the Bible says about reading the book of Revelations and about the whole Bible. This is about Revelations 1 3. It's not in your text. <coughs> Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. It's a blessed, it's a blessing now, are they that read and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to read through these. These are going to, we're going to do the last two chapters in the Bible. The last two chapters in the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and 22. We're going to read them through. And as you read these, these, these verses with me, you're going to be blessed. You're be blessed and be blessed and be blessed. And then what the Lord would have you do is to keep them. And he's talking now about the entire Bible. Okay? So now we're going to look at those, those verses. And, this is, and I'll start off with the heading of coming from Psalms chapter 122, verse 3. <clears throat> and Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Jerusalem is a good, and Jerusalem is, is really talks about people all the time and personified in terms of people. Is building as a city that is, here's what I'm going to show you, compacted together. Compacted together. Okay? That means, uh, how do I say? This is very intimate. Okay, it's just compacted together. Right. Becoming one body. This one, we're going to look at one city, which is representative of this of the, of the body of Jesus Christ. Us, us, who are make up the body of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the head. So let's look at Revelation 21, verses 1 through 8, and I'll kind of go through this one as uh, as we read it. This is uh, 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 Apostle John, or this is John speaking, it. and uh, uh, he's been taken up into heaven. Uh, and given a tour. And he says here, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Now, and that means passed away means in the Greek it means uh, perish. And that's this what we're talking about after the nuclear war. First is going to be nuclear war. And then he says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Now that's interesting. There was no more sea. That would indicate 
a nuclear war, a, a nuclear burst has millions of tons, uh, millions of uh, degrees Fahrenheit of, of uh, fire, like the sun. Okay. Millions of millions, I forget now how many millions of degrees it has. Okay. Well, it burns everything in itself, okay. which would include the sea. Which would include the sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Ah, that's us. And I jumped in. We were, we, we've gone up. We went up this road. Before the nuclear blast, or perhaps during the nuclear blast, we went up. And now we're coming back. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We are the bride of Christ. Adorned means at the finest clothing and the clean washed, uh, all kinds of beautiful attire, okay? And uh, come, coming down out of heaven, that's us now, the composite body of us. That's us, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven. The fairies of pride adorned for her husband. And I saw a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Now the tabernacle of God is an interesting, it's an interesting phrase, tabernacle of God. We have, we have done, uh, taught on the tabernacle of Moses, okay? But the Bible never says it's a tabernacle of Moses. The Bible says it's a tabernacle. The only time the, the name is attached to the Bible or attached to the tabernacle is right here, the tabernacle of God, house of God, okay? Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. <clears throat> and this is a type of shadow of it right there. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, just like Jesus Christ was with us. Jesus was with us, okay? Well, now, again, we're going to be a changed people. We're going to have new bodies and we're going to get the fullness of the, of the Spirit. We're going to have uh, the full mind of Christ and be a whole bunch, a whole, whole bunch smarter than what we are now. That's what we're going to use the whole part of your brain rather than just 10%. <laughs> That's the truth of it, doesn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah, it is. The physicians have said 10%. Okay. And God himself shall be with them, and, and neither are God. And God shall wipe away all. Oh, oh. Amen. Well, it's not amen. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Everybody stay still and I'll continue. We have partial power. I don't know why we have partial power. Can you explain that? Hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, the generators run. Oh, it's going to take five or so minutes for the lights up top to come back up because they have to cool off and they can come back on. Oh, okay. I, see, I'll read through here. As we go. I, I, I'll read through here as we go. Okay? Uh, and, God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. He's talking about us now. Okay? And God, and God, but the Bible says that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So let me let me just put that up there. God's going to wipe away all tears. That's right. Thank you. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. How about that? And away with all tears, what that means is the people that, uh, uh, just to give you an example of tears, if you have a brother or sister or a mom or father that isn't, isn't saved, isn't born again, only when you get to heaven, you're not going to remember they even existed. As if you did, you'd be you'd have great sorrow for that. But knowing that they're not in heaven, they must be in hell. That's not a good thing. So, and of course you'll have tears. So what God is saying is you'll wipe away all tears uh, from their eyes from your eyes. And she's going to cleanse you of that memory. So you'll have joy. Okay. Now he's going to wipe away all tears and uh, there should be no more death. Nobody's going to die anymore. Nobody's going to die anymore. Why? He's telling us we're going to live for eternally. For forever and ever and ever we're going to live. Okay? And, and neither shall there be any sorrow nor crying. Sorrow, feeling sad about something, or crying. No crying. The absence of crying is happiness and joy. 
That's the promise to every single person here who saved and born again. Every single one of you, this is what you're going to have. No tears, no death, no sorrow, no crying. Happiness and joy for all eternity. And neither shall there be any more pain. Oh, forgot that. And pain. No pain. Praise God. Now there shall be any more pain for the former things are passed away as departed. And these are the former things now. And he that, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I would be the Lord Jesus Christ or Father God, sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. That would be God. I make all things new. All things are going to be made new. And he said unto me, now this is the angel that was with John, said unto me, Write, or perhaps it is also for this, he who sat upon the throne, I don't know. And he said, Write, for these things are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the... Now, here we are, we're, we're, we're all saved, we're, we're, we're in a situation where no pain, uh, we have no tears, no death, sorrow, crying and pain, and he says this, he says, and, and uh, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. But there's still salvation. But there's still salvation, see that? I will give unto him that is a thirst of the waters of life freely. So, we're in a heavenly state, and there's still salvation. What did Jesus Christ say in Mark 16, 15? Go into all the world, in that case he means universe, cosmos. Go into all the cosmos, universe, and preach the gospel to every creature. So, we're looking at us in a, in a the heavenly state of having been resurrected. We're in heaven now, okay, all right. And we're, we form the body of Christ, and, he, and we are also the new Jerusalem, okay, which is coming down out of heaven as a bride, because we're all the bride to Christ, okay. Jesus Christ is the, is the uh, bridegroom, and we're the bride, okay. So, we're, we're going to be, we're joined together with him. And then he says this, first he said, I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of of the water of life freely, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. <clears throat> now, he that overcometh, what is it? Uh, somebody give him a paper, that guy that came in. Don't everybody jump at once. Yes, sir. Uh, I changed my mind. Well, I've got another one. I do this. I keep one. Yep. What did you guys do with those extra notes? Did you eat them? Okay, so he says here, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Now that's now he's going back and talking about you. What is it that you're to overcome? If you overcome, you inherit all things. We're looking at the all things coming up. Well, what are you overcoming? Yourselves. You're overcoming the natural man that still dwells inside of you. You're overcoming yourselves. The sins. The things that you want to do, some of them which you still do, some of which you don't do because of Jesus Christ. But that's what you need to overcome. Once you conquer that, you'll become an overcomer with the Lord. And you inherit all things, okay? See, it's a matter of who controls you. If you're letting your sin control you, the sin controls you, all right, then you can't, you've not overcome it and you're not an overcomer. But if you're able to overcome your sin, then you're the boss, and then the Lord says, now you inherit all things. 
He that an overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and abominable means to stink in the Greek, it means disgusting in the Greek, it has to do with unnatural lust, uh, referring to homosexuals and lesbians in the Bible. Okay? These are active homosexuals and lesbians in the Bible. If you're unactive, you've been one, but now you, you've stopped because uh, you, you understand that the Bible says that's a sin, then uh, uh, you've overcome that. But if you haven't overcome that, you've got a problem. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Not saved, gentlemen and ladies. Not saved. Not born again. Not part of the New Jerusalem. Not part of the body of Christ. Okay? Now go back and look at that. I said murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. Sorcerers in the Greek is a drug, a druggist or a, um, a poisoner. Uh, I, you sell drugs? That's you. You're a sorcerer. Okay. And have you ever, because when I was, to, when I was, before I got saved and born again, I was selling, not a lot, heavy drugs, but light drugs, marijuana, just to kind of support my own little habit. And uh, that was me. I was a sorcerer. Okay? But well, I've overcome that, you see. So you need to overcome your sins. Okay? And you can't overcome them by yourself. God has to overcome them and help you. Okay? Okay, and it says idolaters and all liars. Remember, we talked, we had a whole lesson on liars. All liars. You're a liar, you're not going to heaven, period. <laughs> That's the deal. All liars. It didn't say all murderers, all harm, all, but it emphasized liars. All liars should have their part in the lake which burn up with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, we just looked at a city which is compact together. That's us. We're of people, okay? Uh, because the city is made up of people, structured of people, coming down from God as a bride adorned for her husband. That's us. That's the city of New Jerusalem coming down. Now let's look at New Jerusalem. Revelation 21, verses 9 through 14. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit, to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, Holy Jerusalem, is descending out of heaven from God. I'll stop right there and go back. And there came unto me one of the seven angels. Now I got footnote one. Let's look down here at the bottom. Footnote one after that. Dake's annotated reference Bible, which is something that I recommend everybody to purchase if you're really saying God. Uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have three things. If you're really, really serious about studying God, you gotta have a King James Version Bible, King James Version Bible. You gotta have a strong concordance, and you gotta have a Jake's Annotated Reference Bible. Okay, They're very respected in biblical circles. That's the way it is. Okay, with those three weapons, it'll come to you, but you have to search them out. Okay, Jake's Annotated Reference Bible says this: the angels, and I won't read the italics because that's mine. The angels, these seven angels up here. The angels are redeemed men. For one of them tells John that he is a prophet. That's, uh, and that occurs in Revelation 22, um, 9, I believe. Okay, And he is a man, Revelation 21, 17. But he gave what John did here, or what Dake did, is he also gave Revelation 1, 1, 19, 10, and 22, 8, 9. 1, 10, excuse me, 19, 10, and 22, 8, 9 show a man uh, who, who it appears to be an angel. He's not, he's a, he's a man. But he looks like an angel, and he acts like an angel, and he's called an angel. So my point started off six months ago was men are fallen angels. Okay? But you see here what Dake says is that our redeemed men, these angels are redeemed men. Well, let me ask you something. Are men fallen? Yeah, we all have, we're all in sin, right? We start off in sin, don't we? Okay, well... We got we got the fallen part right there, okay? And he says it that there's angels, fallen angels. Dake himself agrees with me. This came as a surprise to me. I hadn't seen this in Dake's before, 
But when I came across this, I said, and I've seen some other things that I've been reading. As you, when you once you accept the fact that you are a fallen angel, other things pop up in the Bible to you that are a lot clearer than they are uh, without without using without knowing that. Okay, they make more sense to you uh, uh, as as you continue to read in the Bible. I'm just saying you'll you'll learn that yourself. Okay. Now. He said, and there came unto me one of the seven angels who had the seven vials full of seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I'll show you the bride, the Lamb's wife, that's us. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, the bride, the Lamb's wife, that's people, descending out of heaven from God. So there's not going to be like a building, like a, 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 these monolithic churches around with all the... The, the walls, and that's not coming down from heaven. Okay. Coming down from heaven is millions of people in the shape of a structure. We'll read about that structure. See, because you're getting new bodies. So that's going to be, you're going to have different abilities here than you have you have now. Right there, right there. What Jesus had is, uh, when he was resurrected, he could come and walk through walls without, just with his new resurrected body, okay? He could, uh, before he even got resurrected, he could read minds and, uh, and he could uh, move things uh, uh, with, with his mind. And those are all abilities that are psychologically proven to exist, but in a very minimal form right now, only because we're reading, we're using 10% of our brain. But the logic is, if we increase our brain to 90 or to 100%, all those, those things will come into play. That also goes with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> right now, when we receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you receive the earnest of the Holy Spirit. And it's very clear, it's not a earnest, but it's the earnest. <clears throat> the earnest in the Greek means a deposit, a part payment for the balance which is yet to come. That's what you receive with the Holy Spirit. That's how come when you're saved and born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. But you still ain't going out to no cemetery and raising up the dead. And you're not walking on water. You're not going down to the hospital saying, oh, you need another arm? Bingo, you got another arm. You're not doing that because you don't have the fullness of the Spirit active yet, okay? You don't get that till you get the full mind of Christ. Incidentally, when you get the full mind of Christ, what does that mean? Your mind goes from 10% to 100% in terms of usage. You think God gave you this brain and then and didn't expect you to use it? Why? Why did if, if we only were supposed to use 10% of our brain, why didn't he give us a brain about, about this big? Okay. Why did he give us all the extra and say you can't use it? Okay. Well we got but we got a brain this big, see, and we're gonna be able to use the whole deal. And then all these powers and things are gonna come that are, are in the brain. Okay, all right. Now, telling these wonderful things are about to happen to you. Every one of you, when you die, bingo, you got the deal. Okay. <clears throat> okay. He showed me that great city, New, Jer New Jerusalem, the Holy Jerusalem, he set in out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light, that's the illumination, was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper uh, stone, clear as crystal. Um, a jasper is a beautiful sea, greenish kind of a stone. Okay. Uh, clear as crystal, her light. Okay, the light of the of the New Jerusalem, this composite body of Christians descending from heaven is like a a beautiful sea greenish uh, crystal. And it says clear as crystal, which means it's kind of, I don't understand uh, the, the extremes that, that the Lord's shown us here. But anyway, just accept it as just beautiful. Okay, just just beautiful glory of God. That's right. Thank you. And okay, this New Jerusalem, the Holy Jerusalem, also had a wall, great and high. Great and high. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting soon. And he ha and had 12 gates, and at the 12 gates were 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes. So it's the 12, 12 gates, uh, 12 are equal 12 angels. And the names on the 12 gates were the names of the 12 tribes. Well, what do you think it is then? Okay.
12 gauge. Now, I'm gonna, I, I, I can see how this works out in a minute. Okay, the 12, uh, of the tribe, uh, children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And then the names in them, in the foundations, the names of the 12 apostles. So it's made up of the 12 apostles of the land. 12 foundations, okay? 12, okay, the, the apostles. This would include Matthias, okay? What were the, were the foundations? So what, is it, what does the Bible start with? It starts with the Old Testament, right? Okay, the Old Testament were the 12 tribes. That's the gates. How do you get in? How, how the, what's the Bible start with? The New Testament or the Old Testament? Actually, the, the first uh, book of Genesis is actually the door to the Bible. You enter in. That's where you enter in, right? That's Old Testament. That has to do with the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? And then we go to the 12 apostles for the foundations. That's, that's the Old Testament. The names of 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now, here's what you're going to like. You're going to miss this, partner. He's walking away. Yeah, he said, I know you had real problems, but it'll work out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's, he's like on the verge of he's like on the verge of listening, but doesn't want to. But he wants to. You ever been like that? Well, you want to hear the word of God, but you don't want to hear the word of God. So he's coming and going, coming and going. What that means is, if you're on the verge, it means sooner or later you're going to tip over and go into the. Okay. So I'm, that's why I'm being gentle. Now, okay. Now here's what it's going to look like, boys and girls. Us, a cube city measuring 1,500 miles in length and width and height. That's the new Jerusalem. How do I know that? Well, let's read it. Revelation 21, verses 15 through 17. And he that talked with me, that's the angel that talked with me, had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square. That means it's square. Okay. Okay. Every side being equal. Okay, uh, four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. Breadth is the width, and and where I go? And he measured the city with a rod, uh, with a rod twelve thousand furlongs. That converts into fifteen hundred miles. Now, that's kind of a tough thing to, to get. Well, let me just go on. The length fifteen hundred miles was fifteen hundred miles, and the breadth fifteen hundred miles, and the height fifteen hundred miles of it are equal. That means it was a cube, a city, a cube, 15 miles wide, long, and 1,500 1, miles wide, long, and 1,500 miles high. So let me just do this. Let's draw, let's say this is, okay, uh, well, I'm not going to go here. I know go, go from Buffalo. <laughs> That's where I'm from. Oh, okay, so, okay. Buffalo over here in a rat. And now we're going to go to Denver, Colorado. From Denver to Buffalo is 1,500 miles. Wow. What happened to the other states, the other side, California and Oregon and Washington? They didn't go that far. 1,500 miles that way. Now, how about the up and down? Well, from, uh, uh, let me do it like this. From the Canadian line, somewhere above Chicago, the actual Canadian line, down to, from, which was way up in here, down to below Florida. This means below the Keys is 1,500 miles. That's 1,500 miles. What is this thing going to be? This, this city going to be? It's going to be 1,500 miles wide and 1,500 miles long and 1,500 miles in height. Now, that's a little hard to get a hold of. I mean, don't you think? At least for me, a little hard to. I think, or trying to imagine you map the United States and, and this. And this this th this uh, uh, city of, of New Jerusalem covering two thirds of it, because that's what you're looking at there. Yeah. 
Okay, about two thirds of it. Right. Now, well, here's the other interesting thing. You know, when we fly airplanes, we go up into the air and we have a stratosphere and an atmosphere and so forth and so on. But pretty much, when you get about to seven miles in the air, you're kind of in space. You're the beginning of space, okay? Seven miles up is space. How tall is this the structure going to be? 1,500 miles. That means uh, it's going to be, we're going to go the seven miles here, and then we're going to go up 1,493 more miles. 1,493 more miles beyond the atmosphere. That's up into space. Now that's, wow. You know, how can you, how can you, it's just, it's just tough to put it in place. So imagine this, this United States again with this huge cube sitting on it, two thirds across in every way, up and down, whatever, okay, and going up 1,500 miles, uh, 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 1,500 miles into space. That's the New Jerusalem. That's what it says. That's what 12,000 uh, furlongs equals. 1,500 miles. And he measured, now let's say, so let's, let, we're just all amazed at that, okay? Now let's go back and see what this, this says. And he measured the wall thereof, and the wall thereof was 144 cubits, and a cubit equals about, a 25 foot a cubit, equals about 300 feet. That's a football field thick. So it had walls. Okay, they went all the way up, walls. that were a football field thick all around. That's a pretty huge structure, isn't it? I mean, that's <laughs> no question about that. Okay, the commentary here says, oh, oh, wait, and, and he measured the wall there of 144 cubits, that's a, foot, a football field thick, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. Or again, he's saying the same thing again, that the, the, uh, the man is an angel, and angels are men. And this is right in the Bible. Okay, our outer, outer space begins seven miles high from the Earth, leaving 1,493 miles of city in space. Now let's look at the wall. I'm giving you some idea of the grasp of these numbers here. Billions of people could be, I mean, if you figure, like our bodies, but we're going to have different kinds of bodies. I don't think they're going to be solid, or, or they may be, I don't know what they are, all right, but that's, we'll just see. Let's look at the wall, Revelation 21, verses 18 through 21. And the building, that's the composition of the wall, was of jasper. That's that, that's that uh, uh, beautiful seaish green, greenish kind of color. And the city was pure, and the city was pure gold. Pure gold. Gold is the purest metal in, in the universe. It's the only metal you can take and dig out and, and use raw. Okay? Uh, it's 100% gold. It has different levels of percentages as well. But gold is, is pure. In the Bible, it represents God. That's a symbol of God, purity, okay? And the city was of pure gold, like unto clear glass. I can't, I can't envision that. And the foundations, remember that's the foundations were, were, were in verse 14 with the 12 apostles. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones, like a bride. Garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a cactus, second a lawn, don something. The fourth an emerald, the fifth an a sardox, the sixth a sardius, sardius, the seventh a crystallite, the eighth a burial, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a crystopasistus, the eleventh a jaconeth, and the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every gate was of one pearl, and the street of it was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. So, so pure that it's it's. It goes beyond the clarity, normal clarity of gold into being just tr almost transparent. Transparent, okay. Uh, and, and which is a, uh, a, a kind of a euphemism, but all right. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. And we have also that they were the angels and the twelve tribes. But I was talking about the metal or the thing there, okay. Now 
Let's go to Re the next uh, verse is Revelation 21, 22 through 27. And I saw no temple in their head. Ah, no temple. Why, there's been temples all throughout from the, uh, from the tabernacle of Moses on. And I saw no temple there, and for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need, need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now I showed you this, that when Gideon uh, we had, uh, was at war, uh, they were at war, Gideon uh, was at war with the uh, uh, Midianites, and there was 135,000 Midianites in a valley, okay, and, a, and, a, and around them was Gideon's 300 men. Remember this, Gideon's 300 warriors, chosen warriors were on top, okay? And what happened is, is they took their, uh, they, they, they took their trumpets and the voice of God, and they, they were holding a vase in their left, in their right hand is the voice of God, and they were holding a vase in, in their left hand, and it had a hole at the bottom where the flame was, uh, uh, the, the torch was inside the vase but hidden. And they took their, they, and they're standing, looks like a cross to me, like this, and they all once together, they went and they hit the vase, bang, and what emerged was the flame. And there they stood, 300 men encircling this Midian camp of 135,000, 10 o'clock at night, and this huge flame goes up all around the camp, okay, and the voice, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now that flame was the Holy Spirit inside these, these uh, 300 uh, soldiers. They, well, he broke the vase, he broke the bodies. Our bodies decomposed and fall away. What's going to be left? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a flame of fire. That's what Gideon uh, tells us. So is God. Our God is a consuming fire. Jesus Christ then is a consuming fire, and so is the Holy Spirit. They're all consuming fire. And we are consuming fires. That's the proof of it right there. God gave us the one proof of it in Gideon. Now, people see that and they don't understand it. Um, you need to let, let it work on your mind. It'll, it'll come to you. Okay? Okay? And so what happens here, we were talking about this, the city has no light, it has no need of the sun, nor of the moon to shine in it, because the glory of God, that is the people themselves, are a burning lamp. The glory of God, they, they are the glory of God, the enlightenment, uh, the people themselves. We are the light. It is in, in effect, and what we do is if, if you were to right now uh, crash and, and, and take away my body, what will be exposed, what will be left is the Holy Spirit, a blazing light. It would be my, my soul that has been converted into spirit and the Holy Spirit together as one single light. That would be it. I'd be a flame of fire. I'd be, and so would you. And so would you. And the nations that are of them that, which are saved shall walk in the light of it which are saved indicates now that this is the millennium. Because if there's people yet to be saved, then it's the millennium. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. There'll be no night there because everybody, everybody there is a blaze, blaze of light. This, this, this is, a, 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 this is a, a, a city made of fire. A city made of fire that's 1,500 miles tall and 1,500 miles wide, setting on the earth, the new earth. Wow. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations to it, and there shall be in no wise be entered into it anything that defiles it, which means pollutes it or makes it unclean, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. Again, he's talking about giving everybody a warning. But they which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that's what it is, only save people. Okay. Now, let's look at the next thing that has the river of life, because this deal here has more, because it it's a big, huge, uh, I won't say a cube, 1,500 miles in any direction, and but out of it comes flows the river of life. Let's read it, 22, verse 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river. So now when he's, he's talking about this, first he talks about this pure river of the water of life, okay? Right? That's salvation, salvation, salvation. Okay? Proceeding out of the throne of it, and in the midst of the street of it, in the midst of this, this, this wonderful structure, 
and we, he called it a street. There are many streets in the street of it. And on either side, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life? Now wait a minute. Think about what he just said. He showed me the street thereof. which is the stream of, of the river of life, okay? And, and he said there, on the other side of it, where did I say, was there the tree of life? So the tree of life was here and here. Wait a minute. And here. Well, let's read further what it said. The tree of life which bear 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. Oh, what he's describing is uh, this uh, uh, stream of the river of life. Flowing with a tree of life on either side. Now, how many trees of life are there? Well, but Jesus Christ was a tree of life. Jesus Christ was, you know, you were right. Jesus Christ was the tree of life. What happens when you get the full mind of Christ? You become the tree of life. Just like Jesus. You're going to get the full mind of Christ. And you're going to become a tree. What does the tree of life do? It flows. It flows with the river of life, okay, to give life to those around it. To give life to those around it. What are we doing here? I'm a tree of life. Okay, I'm flowing with the, with the Spirit, okay, along, and I have told you that before, with the Spirit, but all I'm giving the life as I go on the other side, getting people saved, getting people saved. That's, he's talking about life eternal. He's not talking about, you know, life. He's talking about life eternal here. We're talking about eternal stuff. Now, he said there's, there's a tree of life on the other side of it, okay? Okay, and, and, and so it, we're, we're, we're going like this, tree of life, 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 tree of life. And I want to tell you something. This structure has four sides to it, okay? In the middle of each side is a gate. There's one of these gates, or three of these gates, and out of it flows the tree of life. So it flows in all four directions as a stream. And it has... No, actually, I'm I, 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 there, there, there flows the river of life, okay? River of life in four different directions. And all the river of life has on either side of it. Each of those rivers has trees of life. That's you and me. That's you and me. How do we know that? Well, let me give you some other kind of, what you say here? And it says here, uh, on, on, other, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bear 12 manner of fruit. Now I have here in parentheses, we are ourselves trees, and the Bible calls us trees, we know that. Okay, simple, destined to be trees of life. What is a tree? Let's look at our footnote then, first footnote number one. Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, that means self-control, temperance, okay. And against such there is no law. That's nine fruits of the Spirit. But there's 12. Now we talk around, most people don't know that. There's three more in Ephesians chapter five, verse nine, where he said, for the fruit of the Spirit, this is the Bible saying so, the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's three more. Nine plus three equals 12. What does the Bible say? And 12 manner of fruits, which bear the tree of life, which bear 12 manner of fruits. These are the fruits that you're going to bear right here. This is a wonderful thing. This is a wonderful thing. And, then there, okay, let me, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, twelve months. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of nations. And there shall be no more curse, 
but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Not on their foreheads. In. Difference. On is something here. In is inside. Inside. Into your brain. Shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. Why? Because we are the light. No night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And that means in the Greek, shed rays, has us to shed rays, to shine, to enlighten, to illuminate, to make to see. Salvation. That's the light. That's the illumination of the stars. And the angels are stars. It's salvation. And they shall reign, here we are, folks, forever and ever. And they shall reign, rule, forever and ever. It's eternal. This is an eternal thing. Now here are the blessings. Revelation chapter 22, verses 6 through 9. And he said unto me, remember I told you in the beginning, this, this whole book of Revelation is blessings. And blessed is he who, who, who hears and who, re who reads this, this. Now we're doing it. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. We all like him quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou, do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. He says, I'm a man just like you. And how many people, when I started that six months ago or so, eight months ago, how many people have I offended when I told them that? When it's right here in the book. And then this man said, who looked like an angel, Worship God. We're angels. Not only that, we're fallen angels. And we're being redeemed. We're being restored. When God talks about restoration, when he, when he talks about redeeming, he, when he talks about returning back to me, what is he talking about? When were you ever in heaven? You, you weren't in heaven except unless you were an angel. The only thing that ever fell from heaven that needs to be returned back are the fallen angels. That's the only thing I know ever fell from heaven. How about you? They fell from heaven. Now they're inside of us, inside of these bodies. They're us. And now when they're redeemed, when they're returned, he says, God says, return back to me. Uh, 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 <laughs> that's what he's talking about. We're going to be restored back to where we used to be. But different now because now we understand the difference between good and evil. Before we didn't understand the difference. Now we do. And I'll go into that some other time, but there was more there. You are fallen angels, and you're going back to where you started from. And where did you start from? Not your mother's womb. You started from heaven. And you're being restored back. Revelation chapter 22, 10 through 15. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Notice, and the time is at hand. That's why the Lord's having me deliver this message to you. The time is now. It's at hand. He that is in unjust, let him be unjust still. Oh. And he that which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. See, he's saying... Two bad things. If you're a bad guy, that's what you're going to be. And if you're a good guy, that's what you're going to be. No changes. When he returns, no changes. Nobody's going to suddenly wake up and say, oh, there's the Lord come back. I guess I better get myself back in there and start worshiping Jesus. Too bad, too late. You want to be too late for your internal salvation? We've been preaching about this is what you're going to become. This, this, 
this building, this structure in the New Jerusalem, it's alive, alive, okay? And you're going to become that. He says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to get every man according as his work shall be. You know that? Work as his work shall be. He'll be tried. There's uh, six kinds of work, wood, hay, and stubble, and gold, silver, and precious stones. And that that can be burned up will be burned up. That's the wood, hay, and stubble will be burned up. And we'll be left with the gold, silver, and precious stones. You and I, who are saved and born again, wood, hay, and stubble are going to be gone, even from us. I got a lot of junk in me still, all right? I still sin. We all sin, okay? But I sin a whole bunch less than I used to. I'll tell you that, all right? But I still got some bad ideas and bad things and thoughts and whatever. All going to be gone. Wood, hay, and stubble. All that's going to be left to me is gold, silver, and precious stones. Praise God. And that's the gold, silver, and precious stones that this thing is all being built up on. All those jewels and everything, those, those are all precious stones. And we went through those, all the different, 12 different kinds of jewels. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. They that, that they may have the right, if you do his commandments, this is what you have a right to. That they may have the right to the tree of life. Do his commandments, obey him, you are have rights to the tree of life. That means that you have rights to eat. You have rights to eat of the tree of life. And any part, any fruit you've taken from a tree of life is salvation. Every one. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. We can enter into the gates of the city. For without, that's outside, our dogs, and that's uh, the, the abominable again, uh, our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And the emphasis in the, in, in the biblical scripture, the last definition is second to, to be the most important. It's only, it's only uh, appreciated by the, the first definition, which got you into that. Uh, and I mean, uh, here, well, let me, uh, uh, well, I, uh, and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth to make it a lie. That's the problem we have here at the Swiss Commission. Everybody here comes in here is a liar. I know they're all lying. And actually, if I was in your spot, I'd be, I'd be lying too. I want to get more of this and more of that and so on and so on. I understand that, okay. All right. But we're going to get you out of that and start to get dependent on God. You've got to get off your lying stuff as you, as you become dependent on God, as you come and trust him and see that he will take care of you. He will take care of you. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. He will take care of you. But as long as you keep lying and you're trying to take care of yourself, it ain't going to work. It going to work. Now, the plagues. This is the answer. Now, he gives a final warning. Revelation 22, verses 16 through 21. I, Jesus, uh, this is the end of the Bible, incidentally, right here. We're reading. Yeah. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am one of those angels. Paul, an angel, nevertheless, been sent. Because Jesus Christ said, Ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you. And the Greek, that means selected. He selected me. And what I'm seeing here is that God selected all of us who are fallen to fall. God knew what was going to happen. And some of us are being redeemed, but most of us are going to go keep right on going down. Okay. I've sent my, uh, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, that's called salvation. And let him that heareth say, Come, that's salvation. And let him that is a thirst say, Come, that's salvation. How important is salvation? It's the most important thing. That's why the Bible's here. Any pastor gets up and doesn't preach salvation and give an invitation isn't a pastor. You don't belong. You walk out. 
Don't go see that guy again, ever. And anybody who goes to see women, geez, that's even worse. Not that there's something, not something wrong with the women, but what the Bible says is, I'll not I'll have a woman to take usurp authority over a man. I'll have attention, please. I'll not, I'll not have a woman to usurp the authority over a man. You know what? Listen to a woman pastor. Ain't no such thing. It never exists in the Bible. Never exists in the Bible. Never. Because the Bible even says that the weaker vessel. Okay? And the woman did the wrong, not not I was in the wrong first, not Adam. The woman was wrong first. But Adam knew all about it, but he didn't have authority over her at that time, so he went along with her. We do that a lot. I I've been with women that I I've gone along with doing dumb things. Okay. <laughs> things that I knew were hey, I, this is not cool. Yeah. I went, did a dumb thing. Okay. Of course, I do a few dumb things myself. I no, I no question about it, okay? So everybody's got a little bit of that. And the British spirit, and the, okay, got that. And whosoever will, here it says, and we got this fine. No, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. It's free. Salvation is free. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophet, of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. I don't know. I told you I'm King James. And then there's like, since uh, the, uh, the, the NIV came out in the 50s, uh, that was a new version, okay? And a lot of things that are in King James aren't in that. And then we've had 50 or 60 other versions coming out of the Bible. Everybody has a different opinion of the Bible. Gee, I don't know. What's right? What's right? I'm going with the oldest and the best. And that's the King James. And I can find everything in the King James. I can, I, I can use, uh, if, here's two things, just for example, that are only in the King James Version of the Bible, according to all the other Bibles in the, in the world. Okay? The two sides westward. And we're talking about the Tabernacle of Moses, and we're talking about uh, the, the side west and the side east. No, not side west, the side east and the side north, the side south, and the two sides westward. What does that mean? Well, everybody else who's, who's read the Bible figured that's a mistake, and they call it one side. It's not one side. It's in the Hebrew. It's God's generative parts. It's hugely important. Not in any of the Bible. Okay. How about the name Lucifer? Well, well, Lucifer was was the angel. He he was he was Lucifer, an angel of good, and then he fell and became Satan, an angel of bad. His angel Lucifer is only in one version in the whole world. That's King James. Well, how are you going to know anything if you don't have the, the, the name of the, 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 the angel that caused the whole deal in the first place? <laughs> Two things that are only in the key that I can go on with. And now there's all kinds of different things that are not in other, other versions uh, that are in the King James. But I just wanted two very, very, very important things that are not in the King James, but that are in the King James. But you can read the other ones because, oh, I can't understand the King James. Well, you can't understand the other ones either. And you know, why don't you know, start reading comic books? And how close to God are you going to get by reading a comic book? See? Who do you think is, what do you, who do you think caused all these other Bibles to be written? Satan caused all these other Bibles to be written as part of deception, to deceive you, to draw you off, to draw you off. Now you all think you're righteous, and you're, oh, I'm, I'm leaving this, this is my, yeah. That's because you don't know any better. You haven't studied the King James and compared it to other versions. Now it says here, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of his prophecy, I just gave you two examples. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Well, I would say this is kind of an interesting deal. God shall take away, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. And out of the holy out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. He which testified these things saith. Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.
You just heard some very, very important things today. This is a heavy, heavy deal. These notes aren't just to be, well, if they were his sermon today, throw it away. If you do take these notes home and you read over them, you'll get revelations from them. You'll get revelations. I guarantee it. You'll get more, much, much more from them. You'll get things, uh, revelations from this that aren't even related to what I was talking about. But because this key kicks off on something else and it gives you a revelation. Revelations. That means you're coming closer to God. A beautiful city, a city, a beautiful thing this is, a city literally made of precious people. That's what is coming 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and 1,500 miles tall. Made of, and I've showed you, all these walls and the gates and everything, uh, everything's made of people. Everything's made of people. You people, you're the ones. Praise God. So now, now that we've heard that, I ask, is there anybody here today uh, uh, who would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior who has not asked the Lord to come into your life before? Who believes you, you need to be saved and born again? If you would, I'm going to say a little prayer. Now, I always say little. I shouldn't. I'm going to say a prayer, and um, you can say it with me. I'll say it first. You can say it after. So anybody who would like to say that, for salvation, please raise your hand. Anybody for salvation? Gee. Well, I've been preaching about an hour and f almost 40 minutes now. <laughs> and you guys are and you guys are still here. <laughs> okay. I, so I would say I would reckon that uh, I'm almost indefinitely most all of you are still in the morning again. Even you. Okay. <laughs> So, but what happened here is this: these tapes. I'm getting, I'm getting more and more internet action on, on my my videos when they go out over over the YouTube. Okay, I got one of the, I got 2,000 views on so far. So uh, these tapes are all on on the internet and they're all viewable 24/7 anytime that you'd like to go uh, pick them up. I also have them on my own website as well. So what I'm going to do though is uh, I've been preaching. This tape's going to go out into all the world. Every Every world, or excuse me, all, 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 every country in the world is going to going to be able to have this, uh, be able to tune into this tape. So I'm going to say that prayer anyway for those people in the internet congregation who don't who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Okay, and if you're now here's the deal. Number one, you're all fallen angels. Number two, you're all going to be redeemed if you're saved and born again. Okay, but as fallen angels. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to God, and I'm asking you if any of you here would like to join me in talking to God with this with this prayer. We can only say the prayer acting like the course of heavenly angels for the people out here who may get born again. Okay, uh, but if you'd like to say this prayer with me, and who wouldn't want to talk to God who is love? Because when you're whenever you say Father God, big light goes on you, and what happens is you're praying up to Him, and He's loving you back. He responds to your He responds to your prayers. And he's love. So you want to get love? Say this prayer with me. Let's all rise together. Say it with me. Let's say this now, shall we? Father God, I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for all my sins and was resurrected. Thank you, Lord. Father God, please send your son, your seed, your fire, your love into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. That was all right. Now, while I, I have uh, Greg and uh, Chuck, Chuck, come up here, pass it back and forth.
okay, and get the tithes and offerings, I'm going to ask, you guys all said the prayer, you talked to God. Don't you feel better now? I mean, you know, if you talk to God, you've got to feel better. How can you feel? You can't feel worse. How can you feel worse when you get God's love, a direct channel on you, all right? There's actually tithes and offerings now, okay? And... Uh, That's an offering to our blessing. Yes. That's a further blessing that we always do. Well, what do you mean the blessing? We're going to take your money. No, it's not your money. Who gave you the money? God. God. Everything, every, every breath that you take is God's breath. He's given it to you. He's the creator of the entire universe, okay? And everything you do is it comes from God. So he says, he never said, uh, 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 give to me your tithe. He said, return to me. Return is different than give. Return means, he's, the implication is, you must realize that everything that you have, you've gotten from God because of God. And so then you return back to him a part, and the part is 10%. That is, in Leviticus it calls that holy money. If you don't give it to God, it burns a hole in your pocket. Okay? And, it may bur and it may burn you. Just thought you mentioned that in a negative way. Okay? In any case, God wants to bless you, okay? So he says that if you if you obey me, I will uh, I will open the windows of heaven. Above. Windows of heaven are like this right now, okay? And he said I'll open the windows of heaven above you, and, and, and so, so that a blessing such as you cannot contain will flow down upon you, and 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 maybe you have so much it'll flow off you onto other people around you, okay? It's a blessing, okay? That's if you obey me, he says. What's God looking for? God's got a whole deal, a universe out there he wants you to go out and preach to. He's looking for obedient children. He's not looking for people who say, no, I don't think so. I want to do, I don't do that. He does, that's not what he's looking for. All right? It doesn't mean you, you can go to heaven. You, you don't have to tithe to go to heaven. But, you know, you, we all got jobs up in heaven. What's your job going to be? Well, yeah, okay, you can go mow the grass over in that lot over there forever. And you can do, uh, you can uh, pick apples over in this over here for. And so there's going to be servants, and there's going to be warriors. God's looking for obedient people who want to be warriors and go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature in the universe. God bless God. God bless God. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for blessing us and saving us and loving us. I thank you for this word today, Lord. I thank you that you give me the strength to speak your word. Lord, I ask that you just bless every person here with an abundance of your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Amen. One thing for we, uh, Pastor, uh, uh, Chef Lennox. Chef Lennox gives us a lot of food and prepares a lot for us. Would you bless the food we're about to partake of? Yes, sir. Uh, Father, Lord, thank you for this wonderful message that we heard here today. Uh, we're grateful for the message that Reverend I'm going to um, share this message also. Uh, so we'd like to bless the food that we're about to partake in. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.